what is up you guys welcome back to my channel my name is Shantiera if you did not know um, if you are new here welcome if not welcome back um, so in today's video I'm going to be giving you guys 10 tips on how to grow your natural hair um, as you guys may know I cut my hair off three years ago um, I have that video on YouTube if you would like to go watch it I started my natural hair journey February of 2017, so this year made three years of me big chopping my hair and starting over. So I'm just going to give you guys 10 tips, like 10 things that I did to grow my natural hair. Um, I could do a quick lint check. My hair is pretty much to the boob. Um, yes, strength is real. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to show you guys, share with you guys some tips that I did to... Um, kind of grow my hair and just um you know take care of it and things like that i think a lot has to do with genetics my hair grows really fast um my mom's hair grows really fast um my dad had really good hair like you know curly hair runs in my family but these are things that i did to help the process i should say so um i have a list right here so i'm sorry if i keep looking down um so the first thing i'm going to go into is no heat um, I think that's pretty like straightforward do not put heat on your hair um, I I do straighten my hair now um, but within my first year of me growing my hair I did not put heat on my hair at all um, I made a vow to myself that once I chopped my hair off I would not put heat in my hair just because I know how damaging it is and that's how my curls got damaged in the first place because I was that girl in high school that always wanted straight hair I was in the salon every two weeks you know so um so yeah, that was the one thing I had to do. I, when cutting off my hair, I said, okay, we're done, no heat, nothing, you know? So um, that's my very first tip, is just cut out the heat. So right now, um, I am on a challenge of not doing heat for at least six months, um, because I do shed my hair now that it's kind of at a length where I'm, I'm happy with it. Um, so I, I'm not gonna say that you can never put heat on your hair again. But if you are big chopping and you're trying to grow your hair to a certain length, definitely stay away from the heat because um, heat is damaging. It defects your curls. You know, it's not the best. Like I, I, if I pulled out a curl, I probably got some heat damage somewhere <laughs> because after a while you get bored and you want to do things to change it up. So um, tip number two is deep conditioning. Oh my God, you guys, I cannot stress this enough. Deep conditioning your hair will make a worldwide of a difference like I literally deep condition my hair like twice a week I mean it, it just makes your hair feel so good it's so moisturizing and nourishing you know it just gives your hair what it needs to to, to be popping you know um, and so going into that that leads going into my third tip which is moisturizing your hair keeping your hair moisturized um, I can't stress that enough either your hair will not grow if it's dry and brittle all the time so you have to keep moisturizing your hair and even if you're doing protective styles just making sure that you have a lot of products like you're putting a lot of products in your hair to keep that moisture in your hair um, wetting your hair water like people think that like water dries your hair no water is like your best friend when you have like curly hair so uh, wetting your hair and putting things into your hair that's what's gonna keep it like obviously you can't just wear your hair wet your hair and just not put like products in it and stuff like that but like water and moisturizing products will be your best friend with keeping your hair just strong and healthy the fourth tip protective hairstyles um when it comes to me i'm not like the most fanciest when it comes to protective hairstyles and things like that but i do like for me throughout my journey i wore a lot of buns which for some people that might not be a good thing because of the tension on your hair and things like that but my hair still grew um I, ne I never i didn't have problems with keeping my hair in a bun and things like that but i wore buns for a really long time because i had cut my hair to the point where it was just like a mini afro but i was still able to put it in like a little a little ponytail so I would like wrap weave like make buns and like that was like my thing and then like working in um, as a CNA like my hair was always up so I just wore buns or sometimes I would just literally just kind of let my hair be like I just wouldn't touch it I just would make sure that it was moisturized and I would just let it be let it be free girl let your hair be free <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, protective styling is definitely a main, like one, like one of the main things, just because you don't want to manipulate your hair too much, put too much tension, things like that. So you want to find styles that will be cute and still protect your hair. And then when you don't have anything going on, let your hair be free, let it breathe, girl, <laughs> let it do its thing. <laughs> as long as you're keeping it moisturized, I'm gonna, probably gonna say that a billion times during this video because moisture is like key. Um, so I think we're on number five. Number five, um, avoid chemicals. Um, I know that I colored my hair. I'm not. I'm not a perfect human. I'm not gonna be like, oh, but no. Like my, fr I literally just colored my hair last year. So I went two and a half years without coloring my hair or doing any type of harsh chemicals, whether that's relaxers, texturizers, whatever the case you want to be. If you want to grow your hair. Chemicals are not the answer at all. All it's gonna do is break your hair off, make your hair, it just changes your hair. And trust me, my hair is so much different from what it was two and a half years ago since I've colored it. Like my hair tangles easier, it gets drier. It's like I'm working my way, like I'm trying to bring my hair back to life at this point. But um, definitely like keeping away the chemicals will help you tremendously. Um, and that's just the thing about being natural you can't like chemicals it doesn't make you natural you know so like technically like I wouldn't even be considered a natural anymore maybe like this part of my hair but like I mean I still have naturally I might I still have curly hair so people would consider me to be natural but technically I do have chemicals on my hair and I'm growing them out cutting them out you know that sort of thing so I'm kind of in a transitioning stage I guess you could say because I'm bringing I'm trying to bring my hair back to life from when I colored it so word of advice from me if you get bored with your hair buy a wig don't color it <laughs> um, so my sixth tip is the shampoo and conditioners that you use you guys you have to be so picky about what you put in your hair um, avoid shampoos with sulfates um things that are drying alcohol like all of that stuff like you have to like like literally what you put what you feed your hair is how it's going to maintain the you know maintain its natural state and just help it grow everything is not good for your hair so you know just using natural products and finding products that works for your hair so um when you're going natural you kind of have to do that research it's you have to research you know your your hair texture your porosity your elasticity like everything like your curl pattern you have to learn your hair to be able to know what you need to give your hair um not every product is going to work you might go through some products to figure out what works i mean i've spent so much money on natural products it's ridiculous but it's worth it if you want like beautiful hair like i don't know it's worth it if you want your hair to grow and you want that beautiful hair like it's kind of like an investment it's kind of like a child i definitely say that my hair is like my check is my second child like i'm like dang i'm always buying something for you girl like <laughs> But um, yeah, so definitely just paying attention to what you're putting in your hair. And I know natural products can be so expensive, but there are like cheaper products like Ozzy Moist. I use Ozzy Moist all the time and they they are a drugstore brand, but they have been like coming up with the products, you know, like a lot of brands are going more natural. They're taking out the sulfates, they're taking out the alcohols, they're, you know, so you there's there's affordable products out there like I said you just have to kind of find what um, works for your hair um, so the next tip that I have which is number seven I believe no, number seven <laughs> is trends um, get, trim your hair often um, if you're not comfortable with um, going to a stylist because you feel like they don't call your hair like me <laughs> I'm not comfortable so I literally will do curl by curl cuts and basically curl by curl is I'll pick my curl up if I see a straight piece like this bow needs to be trimmed I'll just chop it off or I'll sit there and I'll pull my hair and chop it off because honestly when it's curly you cannot tell like how your hair is cut the only way I would say is like getting professional cuts is if like you know you straighten your hair you straighten your hair and you don't want like this unevenness or if you want like you know like a 
a certain type of cut like people like certain forms like my my hair has no shape to it and I don't I kind of don't like it but at the same time like I don't mind it because I know that if I try to get like my hair cut into like some type of shape or form I'm gonna probably lose a lot of hair <laughs> no but I'm just afraid to go somewhere and they just like chop off my hair because I feel like some stylists get scissor happy and honey I'm not for it so I do trim my hair myself but if you are not comfortable doing that um just going like every six months um every year at one point i remember i used to get my hair cut like every three months and like my stylist used to just cut it every three months and she would cut off a lot and like so like i just like i felt like my hair never grew past a certain length and now that i barely like trim my hair i just trim it when i see like straight pieces or when i feel like a curl isn't acting right i feel like my hair has grown so much more um but yeah, I mean, you get trims however often you feel like you should. I feel like my hair grows pretty fast, so I find myself do trimming it more than like an average person. But at the same time, like I don't go crazy with it. Like I said, I do curl by curl cut. So, um, so yeah, that's number seven. Trim often, especially. I'm gonna sorry especially if you're transitioning because if you're transitioning from like from a relaxer or you know anything trimming your hair is going to be your best friend because you're going to slowly just gradually cut those dead ends off cut those straight pieces heat damage or whatever um so yeah especially if you're transitioning trim your hair honey okay so number eight um just protecting your hair when you're sleeping I have a satin, a satin pillowcase. I have satin bonnets and satin scarves and stuff, but they don't usually stay on my head at night. So my, I prefer the satin pillow just because, um, just because that just works for me. But if you have a satin scarf, satin pillow, just protect your hair at night because when you are laying on cotton and stuff, all it's doing is like stripping the moisture from your hair, just creating a frizz, you know, with like friction, and like you know, just avoid friction when sleeping and things like that because that can really dry out your hair and you don't want that so that was tip number eight tip number nine is detangling yes detangling because I say this because um, if you're not careful when you detang your hair especially having curly hair because it knots up like my hair I just did my hair today and it's already has tangles like I can't get my hands through this but that's just curly hair so you have to be very very careful with detangling and how you detangle and what you're detangling with you want to detangle with wide tooth combs honestly I think the best way is finger detangling and then if you want to go through with like a wide tooth comb after that like do stages like me personally I do stages so like I will detangle with my hands and then I'll go in with a wide tooth comb and then I'll go in with like a different brush or something like that because I find that I lose less hair that way because if you are consistently just going like let's just say if I went straight in with my different brush which I used to do that I would lose like so much hair and I'm like oh my god like I would freak myself out like why am I losing this much hair like but that's just because I'm literally ripping my hair out from brushing it um you know and then another tip is when detangling you always want to start from your ends and work your way up because if you just try to comb from here to here all you're doing is just ripping your hair and you're tearing your ends apart so just make sure that whenever you are detangling you are starting from the bottom up my last tip is just um treatments like i know i said deep conditioning and all that stuff but doing treatments protein treatments um just like different treatments that will you know help with your hair protein is a really good thing to have in your hair but that's that just goes along with knowing your porosity knowing your elasticity and all that stuff because you can do because you can protein overload so you have to be careful i protein i do a protein treatment like once like no not i want to say once like probably like twice a year so usually like every six months um because i don't want to have like protein overload and things like that but protein treatments and just doing like different um just different treatments like deep treatments um i do hot oil treatments i do protein treatments i do like all those so just doing different different deep treatments to your hair and just really making sure that your hair is just getting everything that it needs um it's just really big so um yeah <laughs> I, I hope that this video was pretty informative but I'm, I'm kind of bad at explaining things but I'm trying to work on that but yeah so those are my tips on how I grew my natural hair to where it is today like I said I am three years uh, 
<laughs> yeah three years three months into this journey of mine and i've made my mistakes along the way i've gotten frustrated i've gotten um you know annoyed with my hair which is why i end up coloring it and then like you know you get bored one last tip that i will say which that makes 11 but it's fine is be patient patience is it's so hard to you know just watch your hair go through these stages and like all that stuff but you have to have patience because trust me honey it will all pay off in the end like i was so discouraged like after like when i first come in here i was like okay this is cute i got this mini afro and then it just was like what is this like i just went through these stages and i'm like what is going on like i'm so tired of this like i just need my hair to grow already my hair to grow already but you just have to be patient and you have to stay consistent consistency is going to be your best friend um so yeah um that's all i really have for this video so if you guys liked it and learned anything please give it a big thumbs up like comment and subscribe and um let me know any other videos that you guys would like to see um comment them down below and i will catch you guys in my next video bye